Hey, what's up? This is another episode of Watch You Strap In. And today, these are not watch reviews, by the way. These are just quick, casual um, wristwatch checks with strap of choice. Just to give you guys an idea of what certain watches look like with certain strap options. And today, this is uh, the Nazumi Voiture Blue. Uh, reference number, I believe it's... Um, is it VF? Um... Where's it NV? <laughs> uh, 2.601. So there's been a couple, this general model line has been out for several years now. Uh, it's 2020 now. It's, God, I want to say they might have been out since 20, 2014 or something. And um, I have to check, but it's, it's just been quite a while actually. Um, 2016, 2018. Um, yeah, but this is probably the this is the latest version, and they've done a number of changes to it. It's very subtle, um, and I'll get into a watch review about that. But anyways, um, I'm glad to have this back. Uh, I've got a story to tell about this, or rather the previous ones, uh, and um, again, I'll save that for a proper watch review. This uh, normally does not come on a bracelet. Um, Again, part of the story, but I'll, I'll get into it. They had a Jubilee style, which they could believe they called the Stuart. Um, supposedly, I was supposed to work with it uh, when I bought mine, which was at least my first one, which was at least 2018, I think. Uh, somewhere around there, at least two years ago, maybe a little bit more. But um, uh, yeah, but it didn't really work. Um, it's uh, it didn't fit for some reason, and I ended up having to return it and sell uh, sell it, or otherwise I didn't keep it. Uh, but it did work for the previous one, so there wasn't really a strap option for this model. Uh, it was for the diver really uh, for some time, and there still really isn't, as far as I know. Uh, but uh, this usually comes in a, a rally strap, you know, perforated leather uh, with this of your choice uh, either black or like a kind of a tan brown color uh, I did go with a black one because um, I already have a tan uh, perforated rally strap so uh, I, d I don't have exactly a, that kind of black one with the white stitching at least I don't think so not 20 millimeters so anyways that's what I went with uh, these look great on on um, a rally strap of course I think probably preferable, but I always like to have my watches on a fitted bracelet and uh, bugged me for a long time that, and that kept me from going back to this watch uh, because there wasn't one. And uh, it's a complicated story, but I ended up buying this bracelet first for another watch. And this is actually by Uncle Seiko. And uh, they do mostly watch uh, bracelets and uh, straps options for Seikos, uh, but they, also expanded to do other ones and this is actually for a Omega Speedmaster you can get this with a different lug length width of a 19 or 20 and this is 20 to to match the, the lug width of this watch and uh, actually for another watch I was supposed to get but that's been uh, it's been problematic so anyway so I had this bracelet and I, and I always wanted to go back to this chronograph long story story I thought about it got it and I said you know I was thinking as before I got it this I could probably utilize this strap for more than one one uh, uh, watch. The one that originally I got it for, which was actually a Seiko, uh, which is said to, you can adjust to fit this because of the hollow end links. And I thought maybe I could do it for this watch. Uh, I think it would look pretty darn good. Uh, because this bracelet was originally for an Omega Speedmaster, this does have that uh, Omega speedmaster shape to it, obviously. Um, with the especially with the case, the twisted lugs, uh, I thought it probably likely that it'll work. And the original inspiration for this watch, I believe, was from a Universal Genève Compax. Uh, more specifically, the Exotic Blue Nina. Uh, look that up, but I'll probably uh, put that into my review later. And um, yeah, so decided to try it, and look, it does work. You just have to make a uh, expand it a little bit, make some adjustments just to get it to fit. It's not perfect, but um, but it's close enough. I could probably fine tune it a little bit more 
but uh, you know if you look at some vintage bracelet options for a watch from uh, for Univer excuse me Universal Genève, uh, I think you'll find that they're not necessarily the most perfect fit either. And I just think back then the way they made bracelets was uh, just the tolerances were lower and they could be a little bit looser, but um, overall not bad. Um, pretty happy with it, and uh, I think it works pretty great. In fact, this bracelet. Which is uh, from Uncle Seiko again. This is their Holzer, H O L Z E R, if I believe I got that correct. Um, this is really close to the ones, uh, the bracelets, if not identical to the ones that uh, were on the, that you might find in some universities and have compacts chronographs. Um, just the style, the way the links are done, and especially the clasp, the way it's got this little bit of a hump right here at the end, which you grasp to, to pull it open and would have a, a stamp uh, logo right around here too with a U for Universal Genève uh, and, the, and the way it's beveled or polished on the sides here uh, spot on so I think to get that look um, overall I think uh, for this price overall it's pretty great because a genuine vintage Universal Genève compacts uh, you know exotic blue Nina or Nina Rent or anyone for that matter, they're highly collectible, pretty rare, and definitely very expensive. Uh, they get up there, so I think for a very small fraction of the that look, uh, uh, this does very well. Um, and it's not the good thing is that I, I you know, I would have liked it to be closer, but it's not a dead-on, you know, uh, hard copy of. A universal nev there's definitely design liberties taken here but you you'll notice that it has a lot of the elements and uh it's been uh, mixed up enough and uh changed up enough to to be kind of its own and still look great and give that vintage chronograph feel anyways um really like this this blue version that blue tachymeter bezel uh really stands out to me that's the one thing and it just works nice with this kind of matte dulled down uh, uh, dark blue dial and also like the kind of medium or light bluish elements in there too and uh, the kind of faded orange uh, accents as well uh, just really works good oh uh, this bracelet also comes in a version with a high polish uh, the center links well the two skinny ones in the center that is uh, kind of running down here I can't point with my other finger, but you know, the, the skinniest ones that are in the center, uh, kind of uh, the second and the fourth one, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, those come in high polish as well, uh, if you can, if you want. And I believe the, obviously the, uh, the end link piece here uh, should have that to match. But I want it, I like always like um, a brushed finish overall, more sportier, more toolish. It does have high polish <coughs> on the outer edges. On the sides on both sides but and that's enough to to uh, give a little little accent and very minor bling and and uh, you know make it look a little bit more refined because if it was completely brushed I don't know that might look a little too raw so the sides are uh, actually actually uh, high polished as you can see anyways uh, this is getting a little long almost turning into a review but um, I just wanted to I'm kind of excited. I'm glad that this all came together pretty well as I originally wanted it to. Um, I really like the Universal Genève Compax uh, Exotic Blue Nina, uh, as they dubbed it. But um, that's not really a real, a real watch I could ever find or even own. Um, uh, so this does a lot of that feel for a fraction and and uh pretty happy with it and the sound the quality control uh is much better than uh, my previous one but i'll get into that later all right thanks and i'll catch you in the next one